G'day, I'm Steve. Welcome to the workshop and the continuing project of the plate rack. This portion should have actually been on part four, but unfortunately the weather has been absolutely diabolical, so therefore I'm making this 4A. So it's not quite as hot as it was a while ago. So what I've done is cut the tenons on two shells. And as you can see, they're all the way through, but I haven't wedged them yet. That's a little bit later down the track. What we've got to do now is these shelf or plate supports, which are actually going to sit behind the plates like that. I've already shot one of them square. I'll just do it to the other one and then we'll be in business. And that will do me. All right. Over there. Now what I want to do is cut the shelves and these to the same length. And I know I could have done that with a saw and a block plane, but I thought, well, I've got a saw there. I might as well use it. All right. So I'll show you how I cut the tenons on here. I've got three gauges here. One is set for the thickness of the tenon. It's this one here. And that goes both sides and down these edges. And to work out the length of the tenon, the side piece I'm going to be using, so mark this one all the way around. And then with the thickness gauge, mark just down the sides here. So there's the thickness of the tenon marked. That's the length of the tenon. And we brought those around to the side as well. With a knife, and a square, where's the square? I'll do a knife edge, which will give me a nice edge from the saw to go along. And again, with a nice sharp chisel, run up that knife edge, and that'll give you a nice fence <coughs> for your saw to butt up against when you're cutting to depth. Now what I'm going to do is cut down this depth line here. Turn it over, do the same on the reverse. There we have the saw cut down to the mark. And again on the other side. As I've shown you before, there's many ways to doing these. So whatever suits the tools you've got, your skill level or whatever you feel comfortable with. Sometimes I'll do these with a shoulder plane, other times I'll use a dado plane. Um, it just depends what mood I'm in, I suppose. All right, we'll do the first one with a paring chisel. If you're lucky enough to have a paring chisel, they're brilliant because you can go all the way through the tenon in one go. If you've just got ordinary chisels, that's fine too. Let's make a little bit of a reference point here. Then just pair all the way through. 
and there it is. Now we'll do the other side. Now this is where you've got to really start to be precise or else your job's not going to be square, it's going to be out of, out of whack. Bob has just walked in, been chasing things. Poor dog. So we've got to be precise with how we fit this. So what I've done is I've got another marking gauge and set it to the depth that the back of the shelf is away from the side, like so. I'll transfer that mark onto the corresponding end, like so. And now, with this large tenon that we've already cut, make sure you've got the groove facing upwards and to the front. Position the edge of the tenon on that mark. And then with a pencil, just mark a little bit fatter than the width of these mortises. Then with a square, carry those up. And then for your own reference, just scribble in the waist part. Double check that you've got it right, because you only got one shot at this. If you mess it up at this stage, there are things you can do, you can cut it down and start again and your um, plate rack gets a little bit smaller each time. But it's good if you can get it right the first time. And that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is just take the waste out of here. Same with these, clean these out, a little bit off the line for the first hit and then right on the line. The rest I'll get with a saw, but at least there I've got a nice crisp shoulder. I'll do a trial fit. Now we're starting to get close. A little bit of a gap there. What you do, if you wriggle it, and you're trying to push it in, and then don't force it, but when you bring it out, you'll see, I don't know if you can see it there, but indentations in the timber, and the timber's shiny. So what that tells me is, it's got some tight spots or some high spots in the mortise or on the tenon. I prefer to work with the tenon you can see where it's shiny there, and I, I can actually feel it with my fingers. There's a indentation of a couple of thou. So either with a shoulder plane or a chisel, just run across there until that all that shininess is gone. What we'll do is we'll give it another fit. And that's almost going all the way home. But for the job so far, I'm happy with that. Now we'll move on to the top shelf tenon. And I'll show you another way of cutting a tenon that I didn't include on the video. And basically it's, I suppose you call splitting it. Um, I can't think of any other word for it. I don't personally like using this method because 
if you've got cranky timber or there's twig or not or whatever involved, sometimes it can actually go into the tenant and make a, mess, a bit of a mess. But I'll show you how to do it and you might like to try it um, yourself. Okay, it's the same thing. We've got to mark out the tenon. Right, now I'll show you a way to split a tenon. And I will stress again, this definitely isn't my favourite way of doing tenons because when you cut down, sometimes this grain can go into the tenon itself. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. Sharp chisel. Knock on order. Don't do it straight on the line. Start away from the line to start with. And just gentle little sharp taps. And you'll see that that will just part away. That's behaving itself, mainly because it's got quarter sawn timber in it. So I'll come right up onto the line, or just about. And the same on the other side. Actually, there's a prime example of the reason I don't like using this. You can see the wood has deviated from the line I was cutting and it started to go into the tenon itself. But fortunately for us, it didn't make any difference. But here's a nice bit. You can see that the wood's come away and it's almost parallel to that line. But here, it's actually come in on an angle. Again, that's why I don't particularly like using this method. But if it's a framing job you're doing or just a piece of construction for a shed or something out the back, it's absolutely fine. But for um, fine furniture, I like to have it a little bit more precise. Now, all you've got to do with that is clean it up. Now you can clean it up with a shoulder plane, you can clean it up with um, a rebate plane, clean it up with a chisel, put it over the saw if you want, but if you're going to go that degree, I um, don't think you would have bothered cutting it by hand in the first place. So we'll just true that up and then measure in the waste, clear that away, and then that'll be fitted as well. Next job after that is to cut the two tenons on these bracing bars that support the plates. And then we've got to cut the mortises for those as well. But the reason I haven't cut the mortises or tenons for this yet is I want to get just the two shelves in and then I can look at it and work out with the plates that I've got whereabouts I want these supports to be. That's where I'm going to leave it. But I look forward to your company in the workshop for part five when we put the tenons on these supports and also we will plane a chamfer on the backs of them. And I'll show you five different ways of putting wedges into tenons. So until we meet again, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork. And if you like what we do, please like us on Facebook, and if you want to know more about what's happening in 2016, join up the e-workshop at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au and they'll be posted all the projects that I've got planned for next year. And again, if you like what we do and you'd like to support Woodworking Masterclass, please become a patron and sign up and pick the rewards you like and it helps us with production costs and putting all this all together and keeping it free on YouTube. So if you want to know more about that, again, go to Woodworking Masterclass, hit the Patreon button, and that'll give you an insight of how you can help us to keep on doing woodwork. Bye for now. <laughs>